offices in the Air Force could stay virtual for the long term. Commander of Air Force Materiel Command General Arnold Bunch says he's reviewing job descriptions and deciding whether they're compatible with telework. Deborah Lee James is the 23rd Secretary of the Air Force. She's the author of Aim High, Chart Your Course, and Find Success. Thanks for being here. How has the Air Force shifted to telework during the pandemic? Well, thanks for having me. First off, Marjorie, it's great to see you. Um, well, to answer your question, I think the Air Force and the entirety of DOD has done a monumental task in shifting what we now have approximately 4 million people across the department who have shifted to telework. And that includes most of the Pentagon and a good many of the 685,000 people in the Air Force. So really, all I can say is it has surprised many skeptics. The productivity has been great. And really, beginning in late February, the Air Force and others ramped it up in a big, big way. They started issuing virtual private networks to people so that they could stay connected to the office from home. They also started issuing secure laptops to many more people. Again, not the entire force has those laptops, but many more were purchased and, um, and given out. They ordered up licenses that could improve capabilities over time. And of course, they had terrible bandwidth problems in the very beginning. Bugs had to be worked out of the system, but they've increased bandwidth. So to, now it is to the point where, at least from all that I am hearing, it is going reasonably well. So a monumental task, and I would say very well done. As you mentioned, Debbie, there there were quite a few skeptics here, and they really did this heavy lift at the beginning. Do, does that, um, do you think, present sort of a jumping off point to look at telework for maybe um, some roles where it would be less expected or, or more difficult? Well, I, I, I certainly hope that this will be something that is carried on into the future, even after we are no longer in the crisis of the immediate crisis of COVID-19. As you mentioned, the Air Force Materiel Command is really taking the lead. General Bunch is doing two key things. First of all, he is planning for the future. He's systematically looking at all of the positions within his command, and he's asking the question, which of these positions can we go forward and do telework either in full or some sort of a hybrid approach, meaning some telework and some back to the uh, office area for work or to the workspace. So he's planning, he's reviewing, and he also needs to budget some of the upfront costs that would re be required. I would hope others would follow suit, other commands, other leaders within the Air Force, because what we find is the productivity has been very, very good and people like it either in whole or in part. So having that flexibility is key. And increasingly they're looking at how they can do more of it for maintenance, for telehealth, for, for some of the types of jobs that you don't think of as typically lending themselves to telework. You mentioned also this, this IT infrastructure piece, the technology that they had to purchase. Um, do you expect them to continue to buy more? Do you expect this maybe to show up in some future budgets? Well, I think probably they're going to have to buy some more. I do know that they have a cliff that they're about to run off of unless they take action and with respect to some key licenses that they were able to acquire um, in very rapid fashion. Those licenses which allow for certain capabilities that people have come to really depend upon are about to expire within weeks. I'm quite confident that they will figure it out. But these are the types of upfront costs. There's hardware costs, there's licensing costs that are required to make this thing um, work. There's also a couple of very interesting pilot programs underway, which if they work out and if they get rolled out in bigger ways, I'm thinking here of the bring your own approved device uh, pilot program, bring your own approved device to work. That's a very interesting one. And the other one is called device one, which is allowing a small group of people at the moment to have access to classified information and classified networks from home. If those two would reach fruition, I think that really becomes a game changer. And what do you think are the um, potential barriers to expansion? Um, it sounds like budget and buying the right things might be one. Are there others maybe that come to mind? Absolutely. Probably the biggest one is culture. So although you have people now, particularly top leaders, talking about um, how they have been pleasantly surprised by uh, how well teleworking has, has operated, uh, I'm still a little bit of a skeptic that enough of the culture change will have occurred in time once COVID is, is behind us. What I mean by that,
that is, I think, particularly we in the department, we were still too many of us in this sort of old think mentality. If the person isn't working side by side with us or if they're not right down the hall and accessible to us in person within five minutes, if they're at home working, maybe they're not working at all. This is the skepticism that many people had. So are we really, really beyond that skepticism enough to really keep this going uh, in perpetuity in a significant way? That's the cultural question that, that is on the table. The other biggie that has to be worked on a continual basis is cybersecurity, especially cyber hygiene. Because with 4 million people now working from home, not necessarily on classified work, but could be on sensitive work, the opportunities for cyber mischief, cyber spear phishing has increased. Um, bad actors on the scene have lots more computers and attack surfaces that could be vulnerable that they could attack. So cyber will be uh, certainly an ongoing concern as well. Thank you so much for the time, Debbie. Thank you.